Now let me hit it again with this high grid current. There's a warning. There's the trip. And once again, whoops, wrong direction. Once again, there's the default code, which we reset just by toggling the standby operate switch like that. Now it's also very likely in most amplifiers, other than the Alpha 87A and the Alpha 89, incidentally, that a severe mistuning, very light loading, such as I just demonstrated, or the absence of a load or a short circuit across the line, as we demonstrated previously, would cause an arc in the RF output plate circuit. Uh, the, depending on what the load impedance is, whether it's open circuit, short circuit, highly reactive, or whatever, it can result in very high RF plate voltage occurring, which can lead to a flashover of the plate tuning capacitor. Under tune-up conditions, uh, say changing bands with a conventional amplifier, if you've got carrier and you're tuning it up and a flashover occurs, in the perhaps two or three seconds it takes to react, to realize what's happening, because arcs are not always noisy. RF arcs tend to be just a quiet hiss. In the two or three seconds it takes to shut off the drive, it's entirely possible that that arc will destroy the, tuning cap the plate tuning capacitor since the majority of amplifiers use capacitors with aluminum plates uh, for perfectly good reason. Uh, there is one problem, however, with, with the aluminum plates, and that is that if an RF arc at high power is sustained for several seconds, the heat melts the aluminum, a blob of aluminum forms on the end of the plate, maybe even drips off, and if it's sustained long enough, it actually will short the plates out. That does kill the arc, but it's the wrong way to do it. The Alpha 87 has an arc detection and suppression circuit. Uh, in reality, it's, an, it's a severe mistuning or gain detection circuit. We constantly measure the output power and the drive power, and the microprocessor calculates the gain of the amplifier. Now, FCC rules limit the gain of the amplifier to 15 dB maximum, and there's no, that's also approximately the maximum gain of the tubes used. When loaded for higher power than nominal, the gain goes down somewhat, but there is no reasonable operating condition for a pair of 3CX800s that results in gain less than about 12 to 13 dB. Therefore, any operating condition with a gain lower than 12 or 13 dB is abnormal. There's no benefit to allowing it to exist. So if our microprocessor detects that the gain has dropped to below 12 dB, it shuts the amplifier or switches it into standby, indicates a soft fault, and the explanation given in the instruction manual is low gain or grossly abnormal tuning, possibility of an RF arc. Why does low gain correspond with an RF arc? It's simple. When an arc occurs in the plate circuit, we found through uh, extensive experimentation that the arc acts pretty much like a gas voltage regulator. It clamps the RF voltage at point of arc to somewhere in the range typically of 150 to 400 volts, depending on the gap of the arc and uh, probably altitude and so forth. So when, the out when this happens, the output power drops drastically, typically to about 200 or 300 watts. And within a matter of milliseconds, the microprocessor detects that the gain of the amplifier has dropped from its normal 15 dB or about 29 or 30 X, 30 times, to only perhaps six times, that is 300 watts divided by 50 watts of drive, which is only uh, six or seven decibels, five or, five or six decibels in fact, and so the microprocessor immediately switches the amplifier to bypass, which of course kills the arc and uh, and because it occurs in just a matter of milliseconds, protects the plate tuning capacitor, loading capacitor, band switch, wherever such an arc might have occurred from, uh, from being damaged due to melting, literally erosion of metal. Now, given that grid current overprotection or grid overcurrent protection circuit that I demonstrated, that the overdrive circuit, that the high reflected power circuit Normally, one of those three will act faster 
than the arc detect circuit and shut the amplifier down to standby, why do we even need the arc protect circuit? It's almost impossible to strike an arc. And the answer is that if a fly, an ant, a spider, crawls up your water spout and into your amplifier somehow, or even an accumulation of dust over a period of years, it may narrow the gap or a spider or a bug, an insect may even step into the tuning capacitor and trigger an arc. Now this is the usual explanation given for otherwise unexplained RF arcs. And when that kind of an arc is struck, where nothing else was abnormal to start out with, operation was perfectly normal until that foreign body uh, replaced the air in the dielectric of the capacitor, an arc will start and it is not necessarily true that any of the other protective circuitry will detect the arc. The plate current is not likely to be abnormally high, in fact it may be low. The grid current is not necessarily high, the output uh, reflected power hasn't changed, and consequently this is the point where the very unique circuit used in the 87A will protect those capacitors. So we occasionally are asked, uh, is that plate spacing wide enough by people who are used to the, the older style with very wide plate spacing of capacitors in the plate circuit of an amplifier in order to accommodate uh, dirt, dust, insects, and so forth. Uh, the answer is the capacitors are plenty large for the job and the circuitry that prevents arcs from being sustained is what allows them to do the job and, ma and makes it possible for the amplifier to be as small, compact, lightweight as it is and still be extremely reliable. What else could happen that might damage the amplifier or especially the tubes? Plate overcurrent is, a, is the one phenomenon that most amplifiers do provide protection for. The Alpha 87A, no exception, except that we have a two-mode or a two-stage uh, plate overcurrent protection scheme. Instantaneous plate current, even for a matter of milliseconds that exceeds several amperes, can only result from an arc in the amplifier. A breakdown perhaps inside the tube. It's not uncommon for brand new tubes to arc occasionally and if the arc is interrupted very quickly by removing the voltage no damage is done and in fact the arc actually clears the problem uh, that created it in the first place. So the only way the plate current will ever exceed two or three amps even instantaneously is under an arc condition. So we have an instantaneous shutdown and this too is virtually impossible to demonstrate unless we open the amplifier and actually short the high voltage circuit, which incidentally is a routine test for alpha 80 for all alpha amplifiers. Take a screwdriver or an insulated uh, a rod with, with a heavy ground bus and simply touch it to the plate of the tube or to the B plus point on the power supply. And the amplifier with, with just a quiet little snap shuts down, no damage is done. These are things you don't want to do. It's abuse and uh, there's always the chance that something could go wrong, but basically that's the instantaneous, uh, let's say, catastrophic failure protection. Now we have a second mode of amplifier uh, plate overcurrent shutdown on, that's on a timed basis. Since it's safe and rated, since the tubes are rated for 600 milliampers of plate current each, continuous duty, or 1.2 amperes for a pair of tubes, we allow just a small margin of safety or operating margin and have a trip point at 1.3 to 1.4 amps. Now this is not instantaneous. The idea is to allow instantaneous peak currents, which are perfectly harmless, to go substantially higher than 1.2 or 3 or 4 amps under some conditions, but to assure that they can't be sustained because the cathode of the tubes can be damaged if the plate current significantly exceeds six, seven hundred mils per tube for periods of time, say of several seconds. It can lead to hot spots on the cathodes and so forth. So in the 87, when, you, when the plate current exceeds about 1.35 or 1.4 amps, first of all you get a warning. The plate current or the multimeter here automatically switches if it's in a different mode to the plate current mode, starts showing plate current. The LED on the plate current button begins to flash and after three or four seconds if the overcurrent isn't corrected the amplifier switches itself to standby and again you get a code over here to tell what happened.